Howdy, it's Tubal Kane again. Welcome back to the garage machine shop. And in the previous video, I worked on the quick change gearbox on this 9 inch Model A South Bend. And in this one, I'm going to take the apron off to clean it and examine it uh, before I reassemble it with the lead screw. Now, notice the lead screw is already out. Now, you can take a carriage uh, apart or you can take the apron off. Remember, this is the apron on the front and the saddle on the top and the whole thing is called the carriage but the whole thing can be slid off the end this way by removing the bearing here otherwise you got to take the lead screw out but if you do that support the lead screw some way with a wire but I've already loosened up these two screws here and uh, they've been off many times because they sure are buggered up and I did have to loosen them with an impact screwdriver because uh, they're, they're really quite shallow and the O'Brien brothers hadn't discovered socket heads cap screws yet at the time which most other manufacturers use here or, or a Philister head with a much deeper slot. Now this is going to drop off I should have taken the threading dial off. Boy, that, that slot is so shallow. And then you see that comes right off. Let me set it down over here and we'll have a look. And there's the apron from the back side. I'll take this off real quickly so I don't damage it. But uh, there is just every bit as much in there in the way of chips as what I thought there would be. took compressed air to get those chips up there didn't it and look at the amount of debris and of course that stuff gets into the gear teeth as well so to start with I'm gonna off camera dump this upside down off camera heck I'm gonna do it right now get some of the loose stuff out of there That's just the loose stuff. And now I'll scrape it a little bit and uh, blow it off. I think I'll use compressed air to get the chips out of there. After all, that's what got them in there. This is a lighting experiment. I'm out in uh, natural light now. It's not real sunny out today. It's overcast, but I, I want to see how this shows up on video. But I have taken the uh, apron and blown it out real well. Still filthy dirty, but it's better. And I lightly wire brushed it with a hand wire brush. But looking at the front of the apron here now, let's just review this. I know I've been over it a hundred times. Oh no, you're thinking, but here's the carriage hand wheel, the clutch, the feed change lever, and the half nut lever. Now notice on this side that we need to oil it where they put the red marks there, there, and then there's a get oiler right here and uh, a big oiler here at the bottom because there's a reservoir for oil and this is the drain plug for that when you need to get that dirty oil out of there but looking at it now from the back side you can see that when we turn the carriage hand wheel there's a small pinion gear here riding on yet a larger spur gear that's uh, turning this gear and this gear is the one that traverses on the rack to move the uh, carriage longitudinally. Real quickly, let's take a look at how this uh, apron works. And I took this shield off of here. And boy, is there ever a lot of uh, chips in this uh, worm here. But when we are threading, the feed change lever would be in the middle position, like that. And then we would engage the half nut lever so that the split nut or half nut will 
engage onto the lead screw and that's how the power is transmitted uh, and the uh, carriage traversed through the half nut lever or the half nut rather with the half nut lever all right I'm gonna disengage that now and we'll take a look at the other feeds with the feed change lever in the top position which allows us uh, longitudinal uh, automatic feeding power feeding Notice now that the power is transmitted to the worm here through a uh, key into this keyway here and the half nut remains wide open like the jaws of a shark and as the, boy that ever filled full of dirt, as the worm is turned it is rotating the worm gear. Now I'm going to tighten the clutch, remember we need to tighten the clutch. And as I do that, you will see that the carriage hand wheel is very slowly moving. Again, that power goes uh, from uh, the lead screw through the worm, worm gear, and then there's a gear on the other end of this shaft and a gear train, and you can't see all of the gears. But as I do that, ultimately, this gear that rides in the rack is rotating through the gear train. Similarly, I like that word, feed change lever in the bottom position for cross feed and as I rotate the lead screw here again power is going through the worm, the worm gear, several other gears and this large spur gear is turning and it is engaged into another gear that I'll probably show you later if I take that uh, saddle off and it is turning the cross feed screw. So that's how the feeds work on uh, this Model A South Bend 9 inch. Now I'm going to take it apart and clean it or I'm going to take certain parts apart because it, it is filthy dirty yet and totally loaded with chips and grease. I'm back from lunch and the first thing I'm going to do is to take the half nuts out of there and uh, that'll be done with these two nuts and looking at it from the back side first of all let me stick a screwdriver into this oil hole right here and you can see from this side that when you oil it the uh, oil goes down into this little trough right here and then down into the half nut and directly onto the lead screw my granddaughter just snuck up behind me, Sophia, and scared the heck out of me. That's why my voice faltered there. Now you can hear her giggling. And with the two thin nuts removed, the half nuts come right out. Some people call them split nuts. See how packed? with uh, chips those nuts are so I'll clean those up real well and then get back to you and we'll examine them to see how badly worn they are and I'm going to get this all cleaned up and then continue with some disassembly here I don't know how far I'm going to go in order for me to clean it up real well I cleaned the half nuts and they are a pair they're marked uh, 74 so I'm sure they were sold or made as a pair uh, these are probably original and they are I would say fairly worn I still got some chips to get out of there the, the chips are embedded I'm sure that they wouldn't close all the way because of that they were so packed with with chips I pulled this gear out of there so now I can clean that real well there's two gears and there's just a little set screw up here that allowed me to tap that shaft out of there, shaft and gears and all. So I'll clean that gear next. I've cleaned up this gear cluster and it's in remarkably good condition, both gears. Next I'm going to take out this gear here, that's the one that rides on the rack, and there is a set screw underneath, which I've already loosened, and I'm tapping what am I tapping here? 
I'm tapping this shaft out and then the gear will come out. I'll have that done in a second, off camera. Maybe on camera. Well, there it is. And notice that shaft has, a, again, a wick in it. It's going to be a lot easier to clean this up with all of these parts off. And I don't know if I'm going to take the clutch out yet or not. I don't believe I'll take the uh, hand wheel off. It's pinned. Tiny little gear down there with, well, hardened grease. That's probably original grease there. In order to remove the worm, there was a small pin right there that was driven in to this collar. It in turn caught the key that is inside the worm and is drilled into that and it's crooked as a dog's hind leg but it doesn't really matter. Now I'm able to get the collar off, I think. My pin punch here is a little spanner. A fine thread. At first I thought that that collar was just held on by a pin but and I knew that wouldn't have any strength especially a pin that small and this will have to be reassembled exactly as I took it apart. In order to get the worm out of here I had to take the worm gear out and in order to get the worm gear out I had to take the clutch out so I took the uh, knob off of this end and that was held on with a cap screw which I don't think was, uh, where to go here, I don't think that was original O'Brien Brothers equipment because it's a socket head cap screw so that's been tampered with and uh, there's the clutch part of it which I'll talk about later and uh, there is the worm gear, holy mackerel that's filthy and clogged. And now, we'll see if I can get that out. There's still something holding it. And out comes the worm, and the only thing that was holding it was the burr on this hole for the pin. And that's a slimy mess as well. Now looking at the rest here, there's really only two gears left, and uh, the mechanism here for the half knot lever and not all of this will be taken apart. This may be enough to, for me to clean it properly. And look at the chips that are inside that clutch. Holy moly. I wasn't going to take the split nut lever out, but it's easy enough. It's just a matter of backing off this screw, which was kind of hidden, and tapping it, it comes. Again, that's packed with hardened, probably original, factory grease. I'm deducing that. You know, a bit of a Chinese puzzle, such that uh, I'm wondering if I'll ever get this thing back together. I might have to refer to my own video here in order to do that. Thank goodness I have documentation. I just had my favorite eight-foot fluorescent light bulb burn out and so I'm in a bit of a pickle here. I'm, it's kind of dark. You know I couldn't figure out how to get this gear off because there doesn't seem to be any way to do that because there's interference here with this part of the casting so I'm fiddling around here with the feed change lever and I got this thing upside down next thing you know it literally drops off so this isn't a if you look at this here that's operated by the feed change lever. And this is the lockout here so you cannot use the, uh, let's see, you cannot use the half nut lever except when this is in the middle position. It's a lockout. This is a very intricate casting. Look at the way this 
piece stands out here all by itself, and it's all one piece. Must have been some pretty fancy core work there. But looking now at this oiler here, this gets right angle oiler, that feeds oil by this little hole here, if you can see that, probably not, into a bit of a reservoir, and uh, apparently then it gets spun by that gear or whatever, but distributed because there's only a like I told you, a few oilers on this whole piece. Now I'm going to put this in the solvent tank here, or the pan here in a second, let it soak, and I'm quitting for the day because I'm running out of steam. Then I'll be able to examine this. But there isn't anything here that is unusable. There's a lot of worn parts. The gears themselves, most of them are pretty good. I expect to see some wear on this real little gear. And this... Uh, shaft or the hole in the casting or both are pretty well worn. Probably worthy of being machined out and having a bushing put in there but or even a new shaft but oh well no need. And I have to make a gasket. There's a little half moon gasket here. What did I do with that other part for that little pan that sits on there? There was no oil in here at all when I took this apart and uh, there was a bad gasket, so I, I, suppose it, uh, I suspect that it had dripped out over a period of time, but oil should be maintained, and as I said before, there's a, a plug there that I took out to drain the oil, if you want a little fresh oil in there. And uh, now, just another comment about chips. When I was teaching by 1968, that's the second year I was there, I realized I can't have a 50-foot air hose in that shop. So I reduced it to a three-foot whip, you might call it a whip, that was the air gun. And even that I could take off and hide or lock up when they played around with it. But to, to put 50-foot uh, hose in the shop where they could go anywhere and clean the machines, that just wasn't working. And they only moved the chip from one person's lathe to the next. So uh, you know my feelings on compressed air. I do love it, but it, it has to be used properly. All right, I'm going to clean that up now, and I'll... See you tomorrow. Good morning, it's Tubal Kane again, and it's a new day. And I just took this uh, oiler out of there. Notice that it's almost totally clogged, as is the passageway itself. So I'm First I thought there was a wick in there, it's so, uh, so hard. So I'm gonna clean that up real good. And this has, uh, entire casting has been cleaned up. And I'm almost ready to start reassembling, but notice one other thing here that this, of course, is that reservoir for oil, and the uh, worm gear is in here, but there's also a wick here. They're like pipe cleaners. And that wick, I don't know where it all, oh, it goes up into this uh, other wick in this hole here. I don't know if you can see it, but there is a wick right here. Right here. So that's how that gets oiled. Now we need to take a look at the clutch, which I haven't talked about yet. The clutch drum, I guess you could call it, actually is this worm gear. And remember this entire shaft and gear assembly goes through here so that the knob is out in the front. And in order to engage the feeds, we simply tighten the knob or the clutch. Now the clutch consists of, again, the outer part here, I'm going to take this apart in a second, uh, which is the, uh, the shoes. These are the shoes. Let me back up. The gear here is the drum, these are the shoes, and these little half moon pieces are the expanders. So as you tighten the clutch, the shaft gets pushed in and the expanders push out and expand the shoes. Now let me take that apart and it's, it's kind of tricky. Now that I got it together I kind of dread taking it apart but I'm going to for your sake. And there's the expanders, the shoes, and I guess you could say again this is the drum because these are forced out to the drum 
just like old uh, drum brakes on a car. And then we've got a shaft here with a couple pins and a spring. So there aren't any clutch discs. That's really shoes. So I'm going to go ahead and put that back together. And uh, this was really a mess. And it's, it's dry, but apparently it is meant to be in oil. So I'll put that together, and then I'm ready to start to reassemble the entire apron. I guess I need to explain just a little bit more here. We got the worm gear and then we got the spur gear that carries the power up into other gears and I showed you that before. Notice that they are free to spin in different directions or that I should say that this one would be spinning, turning and the other one not turning. Now I need to lock those two together as if they are keyed together and that is done with the clutch. So as I tighten the knob, you might be able to see this and might not, that the expanders, well first of all let me show you here that the shoes are free to turn, but as I tighten this, I have effectively expanded the shoes inside the drum here, so it's, and the tighter you make it, the, the tighter uh, the, the, the connection. Now, this gear does not turn. They, they will turn together. When this, this one is turned by the worm, this one is going to transmit power up into the power feed. So that's how the clutch works. And then when I loosen this, of course, that spins. That is pretty neat, and I must confess, this is the first time I ever had a South Bend clutch apart. I'm starting the reassembly and everything has been oiled with this uh, 20 weight uh, non-detergent or it will be oiled as I put it in. So uh, first thing will be this gear on this shaft. And remember I had to have that in a certain position in order for it to go on. And now I'm going to put the worm in. I think I misspoke a few minutes ago. So to get things straight, this is the worm this is the worm gear. So I'm going to put the worm in first. Get a little Earl on here. Remember Earl Scheib out of Chicago? I'll paint any car for $29.95. I think they painted over the dirt. That'll go in like that. And next, the entire clutch assembly, and I don't want this to come apart, I had to take the knob off. Otherwise, it's a bit of a Chinese puzzle. As I screw the collar onto the worm, I have to make sure that the holes line up, so I'm using this little pin punch here to do as such. And remember that I have a key here with a hole off center. But I think I'll wait till later and I put the lead screw in there to hold that in place so I can drive the pin in. So that'll be done later off camera, simple enough. And now for this gear, it goes in just like this. Remember it has a, a shaft here. On the shaft there is a wick, as I showed you before. So you want to make sure and you get oil into those wicks when you reassemble. And then the shaft, as you recall, is held in place by a set screw up here. And now for this gear and shaft, and again there's a wick on that shaft and uh, there are four oil holes here and I just ran a drill bit through each one and each just now there are four of them I guess I said that each one was packed full of crud so they were clogged let me see where my flashlight you can see how much Maybe you can't, how much stuff was in there. So this gear and shaft go in just like so. 
And according to the way uh, the, the set screw mark was on the shaft, I'm going to put the, the wick toward the top. And now I'm tightening that set screw there which holds this shaft in place. A little tighter and I have to uh, reinstall that what I believe is incorrect cap screw right there and oil it in a few places and I'm ready to get over here into the uh, half nut area. As I fit the half nut lever into the hole here I have to be careful to align both the uh, I'm going to call it detent little spring there and then uh, also this lockout Okay, there's the detent. Can you see that? It has to line up with that little groove. Then it'll snap into place. And it's also necessary that you have the feed change lever in the middle position. And that takes that lock out, out of, uh, so there's no interference. Now I'm ready to put the actual uh, split nut in. Remember the one with the oil trough goes on the top and I pre-oiled everything and this little pin here has to line up with the slot. I went ahead and put the, uh, the bottom one on first because I had a little bit of binding there. Anyway, while I still got this open, I thought it would be nice to show you the, uh, how that mechanism works. Simple but ingenious. They say that three engineers at South Bend Lathe Works went insane after developing this because they hadn't slept for weeks. Almost looks like this thing could talk. Good morning. Now all I got to do is put the uh, two nuts on the outside and I'm pretty well done. I don't see ex any extra parts on the bench. Oh yeah, I got one. I got to put the shield on make a gasket, but in fact I think if I can find any of that uh, blue gasket maker or something around here, that's what I'm going to put on there. I was always interested in what was going on behind the stage, behind the curtain, so now we're uh, getting a behind the stage view here of the oiler. So watch what happens when I oil You see the oil dripping and in the trough and by gravity finding its way down. There it goes. That was a long time coming. But as I finish things up here, without making too much of a mess, I'm going to put some oil on all the gears. But in fact, I think I'll put some grease on there. I've got to get some of that uh, MSD. CMD, I mean. Before I put this back on the machine, I'm going to just use some of this multi-purpose grease on the gears. I couldn't find anything else around here, although I have a lot of it, if I look hard enough. <clears throat> now, as far as putting this uh, little shield on here, I thought about using this. That's the non-hardening type, number two. Kind of messy, but I think I'll use this. This is brand new, never been opened. So I will pierce that, apply a little bit along here, and you can see where the old gasket went, and then I'll screw that on. By the way, thank you for watching my videos. Continue to watch them and tell your friends about them. I appreciate your support and interest. I just squeezed out in a, a liberal amount of this, what is that, uh, Permatex brand. I'll put a little bit all along here. So the next guy has to worry about getting this off. And then that just goes on like that with four screws. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's not going to leak the way you see that stuff oozing out. I got to wipe that off. I don't know what the thinner is for that, if anything. That completes this video on the apron for the 9 inch South Bend Model A. Now be sure and watch the next video where I'm going to tackle the saddle and pretty much do the same thing. Just disassemble it and clean it, examine it, and hopefully there's nothing to do to it major because I'm not going to do any machining on it. And then either later in that video or, a, or a, another video I will reassemble everything back on the lathe and that's all I'm going to do to this lathe before winter because it's starting to get cold here in northern Illinois. So this is Tubal Cain saying thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Be sure and watch my other videos and I'll see you in my next video.